Hello Airsoft friends and welcome to this video today where today we're going to be doing a teardown of the Ares Amoeba Striker Kneecapper. Before we get into that though I just want to say a big thank you to all of my patrons who support the channel month after month. You are all amazing and I wouldn't be able to do this without you. And if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed yet then why don't you just hit that big old subscribe button and drop a like too. I guarantee you you will not regret it. And now on to the teardown. Now I've not taken this rip apart before so it's going to be new to me as it is new to you. I did take a few parts off of it during the unboxing which if you haven't seen it yet you can watch it here but we will cover the bits that we took apart in the unboxing in this video too now first of all there's a couple of easy bits which we can remove without any of the tools and the first one is the magazine and the second one is the suppressor I can also remove this little part here under the grip which has the allen key storage and we can take these two allen keys out as well this one is for the hop unit and this one is for different screws on the body but i'm not going to use these allen keys to take the gun apart no instead i have got a few tools namely i've got my little electric drill screwdriver type thing i've got this hand screwdriver which is also a ratchet too very handy and i quite like it and of course i've got my novridge kit here so inside i've got all of the bits that i could possibly need and if you want to get your own little Novridge toolkit use my link in the description below because every time you buy something from Novridge using that link I get a bit of a kickback and again it helps to support the channel if you wanted to you could even save it as your favorite like on your browser and then every time you go to Novridge then you buy something and then I buy benefits that'd be great <laughs> thank you anyway plugging aside let me just get some of these drill bits out because this needs to go onto here to adapt the tool so I can now use all of these bits on this riff so let's start off with what we're familiar with and take off these two screws here and for that I believe it would be this piece here is that correct oh yes there's always something really rewarding with just picking the right bit first go there we go so those two screws are out and i can now remove this little front section here of the stock there is also the quick detach qd little bit for your sling there so we can take that off too but to be fair it's probably just going to get lost and i'm going to leave it in there for now and this bit you could take apart more like you can see inside there there is a screw which holds these two top pieces together but in terms of doing maintenance on the rift you're not going to have to worry about that so i'm just going to leave that together next up i I've got another one of those screws again here in the other side of the trigger so I'm just going to get in there and remove that like so and at the minute this is very similar to how you would take a VSR apart as well with the screw here on this side of the trigger guard and the screws up here in the stock now in theory if this is very VSR like this whole section should come off now and with a little bit of wiggling, it does. So that is still quite similar and on par with the VSR type builds. Now I am being methodical with my screw placement as well. So the screws for the little front hand guard bit here, I've put next to that and the screw for the trigger guard I've put over there as well. So I am trying to keep everything as together as possible. Now again, on par with the VSR, I should in theory be able to just remove the rest of the stock now and I can, look at that, boom, there we go. The stock is now off. And that's handy if you wanna take that off to clean it, if you wanted to paint it, anything like that knowing how to remove the stock is very handy. Now we're getting more to the gubbins of the rifle and we can see here that little safety blanking plate which I assumed was in place when I did my initial unboxing of this rifle. So if this was a VSR here, you would actually have a switch that would come up through this gap bit there and give you an option to put the rifle into safety if you wanted to. It stops the trigger travel so you can't shoot. Whereas here on the striker, they've actually put a little blanking plate in there and I much prefer that. I don't think VSRs should have safeties. If they legally need to, then sure but they always just get in the way in airsoft. I've never heard a story of somebody saying that their safety came in handy on their VSR. So that's the blanking plate off there. If I wanted to take the trigger unit apart, it would be this screw and this screw. Now I'm going to assume that this panel here is what I need to remove in order to then remove the cylinder. So let's unscrew those bits and see if I'm right. And also I'm going to do this with the electric because it's much easier and faster. Is that what I wanted? No, that is not what I wanted. That is for something completely different. I imagine this could be actually for oh it's for the trigger priming so when you go to take a shot ah oh, that actually allows the trigger movement yes okay cool clever so that is like the trigger i'm going to call that the trigger primer so i'm going to put that to the side over there just like so and keep those keep all those screws together as well now on a vsr when i pull the bolt back you can't see straight through it like you can on the striker here instead you've got like the kind of catch in the bottom that holds the um that holds the cylinder in place so i'm going to assume that the sears are actually on the side there and to get to that i'm going to need to take this off here but yeah that is indeed the cylinder guide there just like so so now in theory this should just come straight out 
and it does. Look at that. Oh, it's like a tiny baby VSR cylinder. And it's got so many holes cut out of it too. You've, you've got a cut hole in each side and you've got one in the bottom there too. We will take that apart, but I'm just going to keep focusing on the rest of the upper receiver here for now. The trigger unit is actually cast into the upper receiver. It also looks like there's some grub screws in there, which maybe you can alter for, you know, like fine tuning the trigger. Let's get my screwdriver a bit back on and take off this side panel to see what we can si see inside there. So with those two screws off, we can actually see inside the trigger unit here now. Actually, it's a very simple trigger, trigger unit design. If I hold that in place, you'll see the sear comes down, the sear drops, and that's what then allows the piston to go flying forward and the shot to go. But yeah, it, it, surprisingly, it does look like you've got an amount of customization in there as well. Like you've got the little screw here, the screw here, and the screw here too. So if you wanted to, for, for example, your trigger to start more forward and have more of a hair trigger, then that looks like something that you would be able to do. All you need to do is screw this in, push the trigger forward, and then you have more of a hair trigger. That is actually really nice. I do like that. It's a very simple trigger system as well. I think before I've had like a Lalax trigger in my JG Bar 10, and it was just ultra complicated. There was little springs and stuff everywhere, and springs broke, and, and like part of the bars in there got bent, and it just, it was a nightmare. But this actually is super simple, super basic. And uh, yeah, I, I like the fact that there's a lot of customization options in there. To be fair though, the trigger unit inside the SSG-10 is very simple as well. It's a, even simpler actually than the Lalax one that I spoke to you about before. It genuinely is a pile of you know what. But yeah, I like that. I like the, that's the first trigger unit I've ever seen in an Airsoft Rift that actually has like a ton of customization of, of, of options built into it. Right, next up I would say is probably the hop unit and barrel that we want to get to. And I assume it's going to be taking off this part here, which will then slide it all out. So let's see if that is the case. Yep, that is unscrewing nicely. And it's oiled too as well, I like that. It shows that there was a little bit of care put into this during the construction process. So I can remove the outer barrel there. Something. Oh, okay, so part of the trigger unit's just fallen out. I'm gonna put this back in and I'm gonna rebuild the trigger unit quickly. I'm gonna put that side bit back on because we don't need to take all those bits apart of the trigger unit. It's very simple, it's very easy to see what's going on where, and I don't want all of that to fall apart. So I'm just gonna put this side cover back on. Ah, there we go. I knew it had to be that, but I was being careful because I didn't want to break it. Essentially, the uh, the BB feed tube here is a screw, and there's little grooves in that which you can then unscrew to remove it. And once that is removed, because that screw goes into the hop unit, you can then slide the hop unit out just like so. And I think you can also slide out the little cylinder casey bit too. So yeah, this is the essentially the big glide tube that the cylinder sits in and allows you to have a smooth bolt pull. For now, I'm just gonna leave that back inside there though because it's just gonna go straight back in there anyway. So I'm just gonna leave that in there. But actually that is the full upper receiver kind of fully taken apart minus the casing for the trigger unit and the little glidey insert, which we're just gonna leave there anyway. I did unscrew the little hop screw at the top there as well. I don't think I needed to, but I'm just gonna put that in a little bit there. Also, it looks like it wasn't actually going into the hop chamber at all when I was doing my initial shooting test. So that means the FPS would be different and would change a little bit, but because I'm not at the range, I can't actually test the exact FPS here, which is a shame. Hopefully one day I'll have a, uh, a studio big enough where I can do full range tests. But the label that came on it did say it went to 1.77 joules on a 0.2 gram BB. So that would leave me to assume that with the hop set appropriately you would get a nice uh, FPS bump or a nice dual power bump on there on top of what I had in my initial unboxing. Right now to the hop unit we have got four screws holding this together so let me get my little drill bit here and undo that and there we go so we've got a very simple hop unit here it's just all injection molded plastic we have got our tiny little barrel here with our hop rubber on the end there so it has got a VSR style hop rubber in there. It's got a very small window though, or it seems like it's a small window. Maybe it's not. For me, that seems like a small window on a barrel. Maybe I'm just too used to non-bridge barrels these days and that's why it looks odd. But yeah, that is the total barrel and hop rubber that you've got there. It does feel a little bit, a little bit of a harder hop rubber. So I don't know what degree actually comes in this rifle from stock. So it is a 150 mil barrel as well. So it is such a baby short boy. That's so cute. My Mark 23 has a barrel that's like 220 mil. Something 
something like that. So my pistol has like this and 50% extra <laughs> on top of it in terms of barrel length. And that's just a pistol. Then you've got your little BB stopper blocker loadery thing here. So that it just has a spring and then comes out nice and easily. And then you've got your hop arm on top there as well, which doesn't have any kind of spring built into it either it just uses the spring from the hop rubbery rubberiness itself uh, and that's what applies your your hop onto the uh yeah, onto your BB. Cool. So that is the hop unit there, all taken apart in its glory. The only thing that we have left now to disassemble is the uh, the cylinder itself. Now, I'm going to assume, like most cylinders, we can twist off the top end here. So I'm going to do that. Now, I don't have a specific tool myself. Again, that's something for Project Airsoft to have a little look at in future. But the way that I like to do it when I don't have anything specific is just to get a tool like that, poke it in the end, and then twist it off like so. But you need to be careful at the end of each twist and during the twists that it doesn't just spring off because it is under tension. There we go, just like that. So we have got our cylinder head here, which has a dampener on there as well, which is very nice to see. That's gonna help with noise and reducing the sound of the uh, piston as it hits the end. Then we have got our piston here, just like so. And it's a cute little baby one. Isn't that cute? Aww. Then we've got our spring and it is an AEG spring. Look at that, I'm happy that's correct. I can't remember where I read it online, but in my unboxing, I kept saying it's an AEG spring. So I'm happy to finally have that be confirmed. And finally, we have got our spring guide, which actually looks longer than your standard kind of VSR spring guide as well. So everything is like VSR squashed down, apart from the spring guide, which is just a big old boy. So that is your cylinder there. We have got the bolt pull over here at the end too, and we will take that apart as well. I did feel some pressure, some spring pressure, as I unscrewed that screw. So I'm gonna remove that screw there, and just be conscious because there is a little spring in the end of that block there, just like so. Now what that spring does is when you do your cocking of the rifle, when you lift the charging handle up and down, you'll feel it kind of like click into place. Now the way that it does that is that there's a little ball bearing there and there's indentations on this face place bit here. So that spring pushes on that ball bearing into those indentations to make it have a nice little positive click for you. Now if I lift that bit off there, that is our charging handle off of the cylinder and that is now the rifle completely disassembled. And you know what? Considering that is the first time I have ever disassembled an Airy Striker uh, sniper rifle, and I imagine that every single Airy sniper in the range is going to be disassembled like this, it went very smoothly. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with that. The only sticking point I had very shortly was on the uh, hop chamber, because I wasn't sure if the BB feature was made of metal or plastic. And if it was plastic and it wasn't supposed to move, I really didn't want to break it. But it was made out of metal and everything went okay. I do have an assumption that this bit here here does unscrew as well but because this isn't actually my rifle and this isn't like a really big important part I don't want to put any clamps on there to scratch the metal and take it off but yeah I assume that would come off there as well and for like the longer uh, striker sniper rifles in the range they would put a longer tube on here up towards the end uh, but yeah like I said I don't need to take that apart for now. Now I want to see bets on how long you think it will take me to rebuild this entire sniper rifle from scratch. I'm gonna do that right now. So I want you to put in the comments how long you think it's gonna take me to do it and let's see how close you can get to being right. And also while you're doing that, why not click the subscribe button too? If you've made it this far, you must be enjoying the video. So hey, why not drop a sub and help a brother out? Okay, so we're gonna try and rebuild this as quickly as possible. I'm working out in my mind the order of how I'm gonna do things and then we're gonna go for it. Okay, right, ready? Let's get a timer on the screen. And three, two, one, let's go. Done. There we go. Now I don't, <laughs> I don't know how long that was. I don't think it felt quick when I was doing it. Let me just put a BB in the magazine just to make sure. Or actually, I'll just put a BB in the hole um, just to make sure that it is, uh, it is working correctly. Hooray! Yes, it is working. There we go. So that is a full teardown of the Ares Amoeba Striker kneecapper. And like I said, I'm fairly certain that all of the Striker series come apart in the same way. So hopefully this has been helpful for you. If it has been helpful for you and you've made it this far, click the subscribe button. It really helps me out. And hey, you like the content because you're here. So yeah, stick around for more content to come. And that's it for this video. So thanks for watching. Remember to call your hits and I'll see you in the next one.